Well, good morning. Wednesday. It's 20 past five in the morning. And I'm awake because it is Wednesday. And I get an Able and Cole delivery today. And it usually comes about five o'clock. It hasn't arrived yet. So I'm going to get this done and while I'm waiting. And I may have to stop the video when he arrives so I can put my food away. Um, pack away and I'll come back to it or I may get it all done before we do. So, no further ado, this is yesterday's drawing that I did on a piece of medievalis paper from Fabriano Castel which is five and a half inches by five and a third inch in size and I coloured this creamy, I'll show you the other side, it's kind of a, an off-white colour with two distress inks, rusty hinge which is the browner colour and then the shadowy bits around the edge were chip sapphire and I enjoyed those particular colours really really well. I've got some other papers I can draw on as well but these this kind of um, paper is great for, or this size of paper is great for any kind of quick project, something that doesn't take too long. I decided when I woke up, I was thinking, getting my morning drink, that I'd use some of these Zig Clean Colour Real Brush pens to add some intensity of colour and, or just intensity to help to bring these particular drawings to life. And um, I'll just say here, I'm not sponsored, paid or gifted any product. Um, in return for a review or for content. Everything I use I've bought myself and I mention them just because you may like you may not have seen them before and they may intrigue you. You may like what I do with them or not and um, you may want to work with them. So the colours I've chosen I've got a mid green which is this kind of colour. Yeah, I can do it on here. Which is a nice colour. I've got ochre which fades out to more of a yellow colour with water. This one is light brown, which is a golden colour brown. I've got brown, which is a nice ready brown. I've also chosen a grey. Blue grey, which is a lighter shade. And this one is deep blue, which I want to use on the rocks because that will really help to tie in. That I think it'll help with chip sapphire and, and bring it there. Um, leaves have to be green, but that is a very subtle kind of green and I'll see what happens. I really don't want to use any more colours than that because the more colours I use, the more likely I am see my hand going for my glasses because I didn't put them within reach, the more likely I am to mess up. Okay, so let me start here. These are really, really intense colours. So in theory, I shouldn't need very much and I should be able to just a tiny drop of water pull them out. Now that is much nice. That's nice. I like that. And even though I'm doing each kind of petal individually and they could end up with different intensities of colours, that's fine. Again, that's nature. Again, these these um, brush pens are water-based and water-soluble, so even when they've been wetted once, they will move again and you could but you can also add colours on top of them. So, for example, if I wanted that centre around the centre a bit more intense, I could either add more of this colour, which I prefer to do once it's dried, or I could use a darker shade of brown, which I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put that brown, but I've got it available for me if I choose to. Perhaps I'll do some of the flowers in that darker brown. I am kind of tempted, kind of tempted, 
to do either these in between petals or perhaps they're in between leaves. I don't know. In a different colour. Move that out of the way. I did pick up two sizes of brushes as well. Um, this one is a size two, which is often actually my go-to size if I ever do any colouring um, with water. Because my drawings tend to be so little, I don't need a huge brush. But sometimes um, I do, if, it, if the areas are particularly large. So I just need that little bit more water. I prefer to have, you know, I like just a damp brush. So the other one is a size 4. And um, these are my favourite brushes. They're called spotters, so that the, the bristles, the hairs, aren't as long as they would as they are on other brushes that are suitable for watercolour. And I find I can control things a lot better because I think as I say that, a little light bulb's come on, because I, I often struggle with watercolour. And I know that. I'm well aware of it. And that word, control, I like these pens, these pencils, these brushes, because I can control the, the brush a lot more and the quantity of water a lot easily, more easily than I can with the longer haired brushes, perhaps. They're quite stiff and springy. And so these are my favourite ones. The hairs are synthetic. I don't buy real brush hair. Um, brushes with real hair on. Not knowingly anyway. I've made a couple of errors in the past. Um, and I've regretted it. <sighs> because I'm vegetarian. And I, I just don't do things with um, animal products where I can possibly help it. Other than I still have milk and dairy produce and eggs. Um, I wish I could go vegan completely but I'm such a fussy eater and a lot of the vegan proteins and things I don't like and soya is very limited food for me because it causes havoc with my hormones, my female hormones. So I uh, avoid it. I can have a little bit every now and again, but not much. So, and I do have to say the chocolate soya milk makes a lovely mocha because it's not as thick and claggy as. Um, like hot chocolate would be, or um, the low calorie options and things are, they are they are just claggy, thick. Um, you know, if you want it, but I, I don't need, the odd thing is with these things, I only ever use half of what they advise in a cup, in a huge mug. Because again, I like the taste, but I don't like the, the thick texture you get if you use the, the amount that's suggested. So, I have enough to get the taste and that comforting feeling. And I do, I do add a fair amount of milk with it as well, as well as hot water. So, it's still nicely milky, but there's... Um, but it doesn't add that thickness that can get in hot chocolate because I don't find that particularly appealing and also they tend to be overly sweet if they're if it's not cocoa powder pure cocoa powder and I'm not fussed on making drinks with cocoa powder to be honest with you <laughs> they often feel watery unless you make them with all milk and then it's all too rich so hot chocolate options the low calorie ones which do have sweeteners in which um, I do avoid otherwise, but I think one quite weak mug a day is um, 
you know, is a compromise for me. And it sort of satisfies my sweet tooth. Because I, although I prefer cr savoury, crunchy snacks and foods, I do have a bit of a craving for sweet, tea, sweet things, so... I think that is something... Well, it is what it is, like everything else. I'm doing what I can to find alternatives, and I think I've just hit on one. If I really do have a craving for something sweet after a, a meal, it's one of my worst things, is I really do. And it is a habit. It's not a necessary requirement. But perhaps a hot chocolate afterwards would satisfy, or my version of hot chocolate and mocha would satisfy that craving a bit. I don't know. This is this colour does bring does bring this to life. I do have to say, I'm quite chuffed myself here. So yesterday was a bit of a, a washout day. I said I was going to get some sketching done. I didn't um, for the next book. It's like gathering things. I just didn't. It just seemed it was one thing after another. Um, the heavens opened most of the morning and it was beginning to brighten up a little and then it would start raining again and I got really really rather tired all of a sudden it, it's a phase I go through I think it's cyclical in that I'll be like this for a week or so and then hormones change again and I'm not so needing to lie down and have a nap. But yesterday afternoon I needed an hour because I couldn't keep my eyes open. So I took that hour and then I had meetings to go to and I was chatting with people after the meetings and time just flew. And uh, I did do some drawing before I went to bed, but it wasn't related to the work. Um, I wanted to try Graphite or an app out again, which is specifically for drawing and sketching. And you do set up sketchbooks in it and so on. And I thought, oh, let's have a look at this and see how I cope now that I do so much digital art. Because it's one of the very first apps I got when I got my first Surface, my Surface book. And um, I loved it. But I wasn't, I, a digital pen, a digital surface was new to me and it wasn't something that I got into quickly. I, I found Autodesk, um, Autodesk Sketchbook and you started using that. I tried Illustrator, oh, Adobe Illustrator on my head. Oh gosh, my poor head with that. It, it yeah, it, it. It was a challenge, shall we say. And um, I just didn't understand what I was doing or, or what was happening. And I think it was just so overwhelming that I just did not get on with, with Adobe Illustrator. And Photoshop made no sense whatsoever to me. And it still doesn't, actually. I think the, the bad experiences I had and the confusion have clouded my judgment of it perhaps but it's also forced me to look at other software I've said the Autodesk sketchbook was brilliant for me and I have used the free version because that's the only one available now rather than the pro um, its interface is different it's the same but it's different and I find it far more frustrating I find it quite frustrating to work with it's simple, but it, it just seems to take that little bit longer to do things that were so simple for me to do in the pro version. But my favourite saying, it is what it is. But I have used it the last couple of days to clip some photographs and things because it's it opens up quicker and it's quicker to do, use than Clip Studio Pro for such things. Not, yeah, Clip Studio Paint Pro. 
which does take a while to load up because it loads up Clip Studio first and then you have to open Paint. Just see if I can save Paint as a separate thing where you always have to load up the whole pack of stuff because that does irritate me just a bit. But then it's not surprising because Clip Studio Paint Pro, Clip Studio is. Um, I'm going to say more sophisticated. It's it's interfaces because there are more more tools available on the interface, and more layer you know navigation panels of all kinds. But surprisingly, it it does do things that Autodesk can't do. I suppose some you know tool there are layer settings and so more layer settings and tool settings than in sketchbook but that's also a source of being overwhelmed at times and trying to figure it out and it's going to take me a long time to figure out how these things work or if I would even use them to be honest but um, but that was the same with sketchbook I was using it for three years or more yeah three years it would have been I think to do work in and um, it, I kept discovering new things and how things worked and suddenly things slot into place in my little noggin also known as my brain that allowed it just to work for me as I wanted it to that's actually quite nice I quite like those I am going to pop some of this in the, right in the centre because I'd like dark centres on my flowers here. I think. Even though it's late spring and we're just about a month away from the summer solstice, so my book, astronomically, that's the start of summer. Um, What was I was going to say? Gee, I've lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, I know what it was. Even though we're heading towards summer, those colours have a kind of autumnal feel perhaps, but it's fine. I love autumn. It's my favourite time of year. Hokey Cokey, where's that ochre? Because this would make quite a nice yellowy. Yeah, it is ochre. I'm just checking that it's the ochre and I haven't picked up the the green by mistake because yeah I can do that so yesterday was a bit of a day and I didn't get out for a walk because the weather was so unpredictable and then meetings and these meetings were all on zoom and um, and because I know the people quite well, then I did stay afterwards for a chat. One of them, the chat was nearly two hours long, or over an hour long, to be honest, which was lovely. And um, I really enjoyed that. Well, my delivery has just come, so I'm going to li I'm going to stop the camera. For you, you won't even notice any passage of time. But I'm just saying. So I'll be back in a moment. So there we are, just a few moments later, or a few minutes, and I'm back. It was only a small order this week because I wasn't too well last week. I didn't eat much in the way of the fruit and veggies I've got, but I say fruit and veggies, it's the veggies, the fruit bubbles. Um, I was down to my last banana and uh, I've got plenty of apples because I forgot, <laughs> forgot to skip or Perhaps I didn't have enough for a week. It happens. I build them up and every now and again I've got to skip an order for the week. Um, because I've got too much. So that's done. And actually I went down in the nick of time because it just started spotting with rain. And so well, I think it had or it could have been the rain off the bag I put over the 
um, box for return. As with Abel and Cole, your produce comes in boxes and different boxes for different things. So most of mine are green. Occasionally I've got a purple one which would have household products in. I did today because I've um, I'd ordered some bathroom cleaner, antibacterial bathroom cleaner through them, which is um, by method. And um, I like method products, but they don't carry the washing up liquid. They seem they do a really good job. They don't seem to irritate my skin as much as others. And even though they smell nice, they don't affect the asthma, my asthma. So, because I am aware that I need to be cautious of such things. So, um, I think it's because they are all they're plant based, and um, I'm not sure if the scents are natural oils, like aromatherapy oils or essences or whatever, but they just don't seem to affect me as much as. other products do so and I still like nice smells even though they can irritate me that green has just helped okay I've got that last ring to do and I think mostly it's on the outside so I think I'm going to use green again for it just to give it that bit of a difference if you ever look at flowers, that often they, they do have green rings in their centre. Because they do. I don't know why. I'm not a botanist. Um, it may just be pigmentation. It may be just the way that these colours look under ultraviolet light to all the pollinating insects. So that's really interesting. I um, don't know if you've ever seen it, but if you look up you know pictures of flowers under UV light they look so different the patterns that are on the um, petals and so on and the centers of the flowers where all the the pollen and nectar would be are quite different and it's almost like a landing strip for bees it guides them towards it and it's amazing amazing what other creatures can see because they see light, different wavelengths of light to humans. And although we may not, you know, it's a way of changing an ultraviolet light image into something that's visible for us. It gives us an idea of what they can see. The colours are beautiful, how people do it. I do have to say that they really, really are beautiful. I've just realised I'm going to have to dig out another green, I think, because I'm going to end up with an awful lot of colours very much the same otherwise. And I do want a difference in tones of green. This is going to be an interesting one to complete. You can tell that already. I'm happy with it. I am, um, so yeah, so I was burbling about Abel and Cole. So yeah, so I like that. And so that, you know, I'm vegetarian and I think they use they'd use different coloured boxes for meat and things so you don't you don't get that cross-contaminated and so on and um, I think I had purple was the one with my um, bathroom cleanser in and it was it was a box that just had that the, the bottle in the spray bottle and um, nothing else just the spray bottle Oh, and a little trial bag of some organic muesli, which is lovely. And I was tempted to put it in a bowl to nibble with while I did this. But I didn't think you'd enjoy the sound of me crunching and stopping every now and again to talk with a mouthful. And I thought, nah, I'm not that hungry. It was tempting because it was there. Yeah, that, those little sprigs are rather lovely. So I think I've done with that. This... Um, I need a slightly darker green or a different green. So it's looking for one. 
mid green what was that one that was mid green as well so the problem i've got two or three sets of these pens here we have a look at olive green there's olive actually olive green would do it there we are um So I don't know how many uses they get out of their cardboard boxes, which aren't sealed with tape or anything. They come with cotton string round to hold them closed. And I always pop those back in the box because I don't know whether they recycle them um, or whether it's possible to. But I know, I, I don't know whether it would be counted as compostable, so it could go out with my compostable kitchen waste. But I just pop it back in the boxes. Um, they've even started a zero waste scheme where you can, for things that you would buy in largish amounts, so dried goods, things like pastas, rice, seeds, nuts, I think, lentils, and so on, where you buy them in a, like you have them delivered in a reusable plastic pot, and then they ask you to decant them into another container, like a, a mason jar or something similar, and then send these plastic pots back with your next, you know, next delivery, leave, you know, they go back. And the plastic pots are being reused in a way to cut down on um, packaging waste. I haven't taken that up yet because I don't really, I don't really eat much in the way of pasta or rice to be honest I love them but I just don't eat much I love lentils in fact I might make a dal today lentil curry that'd be nice um, and I like the idea but I haven't bought into it yet I think you pay a an annual subscription for the the little pots of about 10 pounds is helping them to cover the cost of buying them in because you know because this year has been difficult for people I suppose or it's a big investment or it will make you send them back I don't know but it supports the company and then it's the storage jars and things that need to be bought and I need to use up my supplies of stuff first before I do this really but it's something I am thinking about in the future. They call it Club Zero. So the idea is the only waste you have is the food you don't use. And I think the pots they use, the plastic pots, are endless. Are made out of endlessly recyclable plastic or something like that. So they've been a really good company. I'm, I've used Abel and Cole for must be the best part of 10, 15 years. Not consistently throughout that time, perhaps even longer, but I have used them. And since the start of the pandemic, I was back to using them again. And um, it wasn't long after I, you know, re restarted that they stopped taking new customers or even old customers because they had all these restrictions to stick to. and. Um, and it, it must have been an absolute nightmare to work out but they have and they've come through it and I can and I find the convenience of having my food delivered brilliant I can't get everything from Abel and Cole um, as I've said I'm a fussy vegetarian and um, there are things I like that they don't carry, like um, Corn or Linda McCartney products, for example. And I'm fussy with the ones of those I like. And it, well, you know, I know. So I tend to purchase those on a less frequent level because they last me longer anyway. And, um, but I'd like to get as much of my fruit and veg and other stuff from Abel and Cole as I can is all organic and it is all I say all lovely apart from their love affair with kale and things like that 
I think that was the most frustrating thing about the first first part of it all was they were only doing boxes of fruit and veg, mixed fruit and veg. Or I think they did just veg on their own. I don't think they did just fruit. And um, whereas in the past there was always you could always have a good say in what you liked, what you didn't like, what to pack, what not to pack. Because I'm a fussy eater, so it used to be great. And this was frustrating for me because I'd often get things week after week I didn't eat. I don't like avocado. I don't like kale. I don't like salad leaves. I was sick of the sight of courgettes after several weeks because I, I, not a lover of courgette. It has to be said. I'll use them if I have to, but they're not my favourite. And um, but I knew the reasons for it. And in the lean, what's known as lean time, it's a time in year in the year between the different seasons, where there's not a lot of. Um, food being you know picked um, wait it's the last of one season's growth and waiting for the the new season to really take off and of course we had the uncertainty of food being shipped in with Brexit happening and that's had a knock-on effect on prices I have to say it's it's amazing how much food prices have gone up, I think. Perhaps other things as well. But, um, as if that couldn't be predicted. But, um, so, and you know, of course, the, the other countries where there would be food produced were also going through a pandemic. So it was, it was an unusual time of year to be without you know, to be without that choice, I think, and, um, but the good thing was, it did, because I, it was so difficult to get food otherwise, I had to be quite creative in how I shopped, and I also ended up eating fairly healthily, because there was no way I was going to venture into a supermarket, but I managed, and perhaps ate a bit unhealthily at times, but I did manage, but oddly, also more healthily in some ways. And I took the time to cook for myself. And of course, once you, I was able to get a wider range of foods, that effort to cook with what I had meant that I started to, my store cupboard started growing again because I always keep a good store cupboard. Um, always have done, but it faded throughout the first few months of the pandemic as um, as I used things up and couldn't replace them because they just weren't available. But of course now that's not the case and my store cupboard is full and I don't always use the stuff in it. But that's the nature of store cupboards, I think, in my in my book. They're there for when I need them, not to use necessarily as a first resort, but you know, because the stuff in there will keep. But I think there is some stuff in there that I do need to use up that things like I bought some lentil rice. Because whatever rice I was buying just wasn't cooking the way rice used to and I don't know what that is whether it's a difference in suppliers um, to supermarkets or you know, places but it or perhaps a chase, change in my taste I just could not get rice to cook in a way I like it and I'm very good at cooking rice I, I'm not boasting I'm just stating a fact I know how to cook rice so it doesn't stick and it's just nicely the texture of it is just what it should be it's all to do with measuring rice according to your knuckles that's what my my friend at university an Indian, a girl of Indian descent taught me and I still stick to it even now I'll use knuckles on fingers or thumbs to 
to measure the depth of rice. So I put one knuckle depth of rice in the pan, uncooked rice this is, in the pan. Then on top of that I need to add the next knuckle of water, cold water, once I've rinsed and washed the rice, um, washed and rinsed even, the point is rinsing it before you wash it. And then you bring it to the boil, turn, turn the heat down so it's just simmering, put the lid on and leave it until the water's just about absorbed. There has to be a tiny little bit left of really, really boiling water at the bottom. And then you turn the heat off and you let it sit in its own steam. You don't stir it or move it around because that can break the rice up and it will um, become soggy and sticky. Not soggy but sticky. We don't don't like sticky rice. And then what do you I think you fluff it. Yeah that's right, you fluff it with a fork before you put the lid on and then you just leave it to absorb the steam. And if the steam isn't quite absorbing quickly enough, then you just put the heat on for a moment and just help to heat the water back up again. And it's perfect rice every time. It's so simple. It doesn't matter what size hands you've got or anything, it just means that if you've got big hands you cook more rice. But it works perfectly for me. So there we are, that's all my... Um, um, stuff done. Now at the bottom I'm going, actually I think we're going to have blue rocks with some brown highlights to be honest. I got the greys out but I'm not too sure. I might use the blue grey actually for, the, for a bit of variation in the colours of blue. So I've talked about all kinds of stuff here. Yeah? <laughs> so. About food because Wednesday is food day. It's the day I get my. I know what comes because I rarely get one of the mixed fruit and vegetable boxes now because the, the smallest one is for one or two people and I find it's too much for me in a week because it's not just that fruit and veg that, that I'll eat. Um, I do have to say that. Um, This brush is quite dry. But it will work. The colour brush, I mean, not my water, not the brush I'm using. Going outside the lines there doesn't matter. Going outside the lines isn't important, even with things like this. In the grand scheme of things, it will work out. So yeah, so Wednesday is food day, so I've got my fruit bowl and supply of kiwi fruit replenished. I did buy some strawberries in a trip to a, a local supermarket. Um, Sunday was it? Did I go Sunday or was it Monday? Monday. On Monday, so I've got strawberries for a bit because I will get through loads of them and as lovely as the organic ones are they're really expensive and sadly they don't last for as long in my fridge even which is great because it means I eat them I'll eat them the day I get them and then the next day and they're gone and so I need another couple of punnets a week which would cost me the best part of £15 I think it would be which is fine, you know, they're, they're beautiful and but they wouldn't last. Because there's only so many strawberries I can eat in a day. So and that is the truth of it. There's only so many raspberries I can eat in a day. 
Let's add some of the, the blue or grey to these other ones. nearly done the colouring. Decide what I'm going to do with the bits around the edges, that uh, border of things. So I suspect these pens are ones that won't be go aren't going to be disappearing in the purge of art materials I'm going to have, because these always seem to work really quite nicely for me clean colour, the Zig e -zig pens, brush pens, they really do. And the colours are so highly pigmented, it's lovely. just need a dot of colour there because I can see that one should be that part of that. And then what I'm going to do is in these bits, I'm going to add in the other bit, the other bits here. Like rocks, you sometimes get coloured bands in them. So I'm going to add some colours here and there to them. Try and vary them a little bit so as to where they are. And make use of this lovely reddy brown. And the ochre because I haven't used much of ochre so it would be nice to use some ochre to tie it in be nice don't need a lot the light brown then to add a different tone of brown. I think I said yesterday and I'm going to repeat myself today I do like the combination of sort of rusty browns and um, navy blues and um, no doubt textures of rusty reds as well something lovely in that kind of combination. So that's all the zig pens done with. It's now deciding what on earth I'm going to do with this over here. Now then I'm going to try something out on the back. Let's see if I can find oh, I don't tell me that. No, I haven't got one to hand. Or have I? I don't know. Oh, no, I don't. Um, I don't really know what I want to do with these then. I was hoping I was hoping I had a gold jelly roll pen to hand, but it seems I don't. I haven't kept one in the in my pencil tray, which is odd for me, because I would normally keep one there. So, well, that's decided it for me. So these, I'm going to go back to the red brown for these bits here again it's about colouring more as a pattern than realism I suppose Put little dots of this colour near the little beads to add some shadow to the shape but tying in the colours so that they're not different to the rest of the design so just make the centre wet and then allow the colour to I say wet, damp in the middle 
and then just let the colour flow into that dampness. That one's perhaps a bit too damp, it'd be fine. But it will mean that the ends stay brown, darker brown in the centre, just has that hint of that colour in. Otherwise it all becomes one colour and there's no depth to it. Though I can go back and add in if I wish. Up here the colour is going to be more intense because the background is, so the background colour will show through. It's really quite nice. And then I'll get the light, light brown. And the little beads can be the, the more golden colour brown. Again, I'm just going to put a drop of this colour at the bottom bottom corner. Circles don't have corners, but you know, if they were square towards that bottom left corner in all of them, again, it's about creating a pattern rather than reality. But. I think it was something that was said when I was watching a Zentangle video that adding shadows and lights is more about adding more pattern rather than paying attention to light sources. And that actually made sense, although I do pay attention to light sources as well. It's always nice to go, yeah, that's okay, I can, I can live with that because my work is more about making things... Um, more of a pattern than it is a realist because my work is isn't realistic generally I can do it but I like to work like this so there we are so I've done this I do think this needs some extra lines and so on so I'm going to grab out a Posca pen yeah we will use a Posca pen let's get it going and I'm going to add Some lovely lines. In here. One dot and a long line. I'm not going to take it right up. Well, there was two dots in that one. All the way up to the black line because I'm not in the mood for going over my black lines today. I'm guessing that gold would work here as well or something like that, but white just seems to add that subtlety of texture without overpowering. That just adds that interest. And these pens are really quite good at not picking up the colour from underneath. Signos and jelly rolls can because it's the formulation of the ink that's in it. So I think Posca are more paint pens. I do think it's an acrylic paint, but I'm not entirely sure. I can remember my very the very first sets of Pos Posca pens I had was in the early days of teaching when I had a room that needed a lot of decoration because my my science labs walls were full of brightly coloured things, posters, notices, information. It always had to be really brightly coloured and I bought Posca pens to create posters. There weren't so many available and of course um, when I started teaching there weren't computers as such. They're very few and far between. You have the um, humble BBC computers for 
computer science as it was then. Computer programming is now IT. Um, and you did learn programming and very basic kinds of databases and spreadsheets and word processing that you would have on the BBC computers, um, which were quite amazing because they their word processor was um, a WYSIWYG one, so what you saw, what you got, sort of. Um, they did have one that was like that, which was, wow, amazing, nowadays. And um, before that particular, I can't remember what it was called, before that one you'd have to enter the codes in for where you wanted bold and underlining. And I did all of that when I typed up my own thesis. Um, I taught myself to text type during my first few months, a couple of months of a PhD. Practice every day and I still can text type, I still text type. I like to use all fingers. That's why phones irritate me, because it just takes me so much longer. So, just added a couple of white dots on the rocks to bring them to life. But I haven't done it any, anything anywhere else. I just wanted to bring some interest to these. So there you go. That's my morning rambling <laughs> in between with a little break to put my stuff away. Um, I'm just about ready to go, go back to sleep because I only had a few hours and I'm tired. And um, a couple more hours and then I'll be ready for the day. My Wednesdays are very funny days. It's my weekend really. Tuesdays and Wednesdays tend to be my weekend because the days are so odd in what, how, how they're structured. But um, so there we are. I just hope you enjoyed watching this again. I'll just make it quite plain clear. I'm not paid or sponsored in any kind of way, whether it's through free gifts or whatever, to, to promote any of the products. I mention them just out of interest in case you're in, you like what you see and you might want to have a look at using them. I'm not saying you should. They're not everybody's cup of tea. Um, I prefer the real brush bends, Dombos, but Tombos have got a different range of colours. So, yeah. It, horses for courses, it depends what I'm doing. So, thank you for joining me. Thank you for sticking with the video again today, if you did. If you like what you see, please give me a like video a like. Um, consider subscribing to the channel because it'd be nice. It's a bit of encouragement for me to keep going perhaps or no I don't need any encouragement. I'm happy to talk but it'd be nice. It'd be nice to get up to a hundred or over a hundred because then I can change my the name of my channel to my name which will you know be nice because it, it will be. I can get it to tie in then with or my other social media rather than having a random... Anyway, I'm, I'm wittering. I'm terrible. So, thank you ever so much for joining me. Please enjoy the rest of your day. And just thank you once again. Bye-bye.